Hello, John. Hello, Adama. And so today we're going to talk about Michael Healy Ray for Taoiseach. Um, Danny Healy Ray nominated his brother in the doll um, for Taoiseach. There was no vote put to it because Simon Harris was elected, obviously. Um, I just want to ask you your your um, opinions on someone like Michael Healy Ray for Taoiseach. He's part of the independent group with Matty McGrath and the rest of them, you know. Um, I'll give you a straight answer. I'll give you a straight answer straight away. Hip, hip, hooray. That's what I'm saying. I could say that three times. Uh, marvellous. Now, what I would have liked to have known, his brother Paddy uh, proposed a Michael Healy Ray with long experience. In his, the brother Danny, his brother Danny. Now, hold on. Long experience. It was a pity that the like of uh, uh, somebody else of the independents didn't second the proposal and go to a vote. I would have loved to hear that. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of organisation would have been good. His brother Paddy, and long may he continue, and likewise Michael Healy Ray, both from Kerry, and their father did great work down there because him and one or two more supported Charlie Hawhey when he was Taoiseach and um, had a great number of TDs, far more than they have now with this Martin individual. Uh, but uh, uh, so his father did got great uh, uh, road works and didn't know what in, in Kerry and he did great work. Well done, uh, Lord Emerson. And Michael Healy Ray is cut from the same cloth. I supplied him with goods when I was doing my business there and uh, I found him very good. Uh, so I have a, I mean, I, I know what they're like. He had a, a main supermarket there and he still has it. And uh, his wife uh, runs it and others, and uh, it's marvellous to see it in Kilgarvan. So I'm pretty familiar with Michael Healy Ray, and I, I I I would have loved to hear somebody second it, and let's put it to a vote. And we'll yeah, see I, how I, many would vote. I think, look, radical change is needed um, in the government structure in Ireland, and having somebody like Michael Healy Ray, if they can't put him in as a Taoiseach, put him in as something, something, something give him some bit of power for rural Ireland. Because the current um, politicians that we have, most people would, most Irish people would regard them as the government of injustice, you know, and they don't do not represent rural people in Ireland. I mean, if you look at the problems in rural Ireland, um, unemployment, dis sustainability, transport, broadband, farmers, um, the government had recently introduced a vacant property grant. One thing they forgot about was that there's a serious lack of builders in rural Ireland. To do the work. Well, aside, from the, aside from the builders, etc., John Malone's point is that they denuded uh, the towns and villages in Ireland that were supplies with a great rail system. And the political party, mainly Fianna Fáil, Mr. Dr. Todd Andrews, he wasn't a medical doctor, but he must have been educated with a PhD. And uh, he saw fit to arrive rutchard over our brothers and sisters and close all the railways. And I was up in Donegal on the, on the, on the, on the uh, narrow gauge. And, you know, I, I wish to goodness there had to be independent TDs in Donegal that would not allow it to be uh, closed. Yeah, and the, barricade the, themselves in and stop anybody interfering with it. That would be the way I would like to see behaviour. Independent. You won't get it with the political parties, they have ruled for long enough. It's time for a change, and I mean a real change. Yeah, you need serious... independence and ones of that calibre, and people that perhaps in Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael, Labour, and this, and the other party that you care to mention, and it'd be, if they're that way inclined, they should leave those parties because they're in a sinking ship there. Uh, they have misruled and uh, flooded the country with people from God knows where, and uh, given us all a bit of a heading with what they've done. And uh, Michael Healy Ray, being proposed by his brother Paddy, was a great blessing. I heaved a big cheer when I when I when I read the uh, the item in in the in the paper, and uh, I said to myself, "I wish to goodness I was in that doll. I'd be seconding him, and I'd be manning a vote, and they'd be looking over at the other crowd and saying, "You put us, you put us into 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 
in, into a very bad situation which are which are ruled. Uh, you bypass towns. We have deserted villages now that we never had deserted towns because we are policies. Bypassing towns and and flooding us with multiples from God knows where. Bring back the independent stores, I say, and Michael Healy Ray, people like him would be supporting a look at that. And encourage the people, give them, give them, give them finance so as they can uh, perhaps help their own countries that have come in here and uh, maybe to have talent, but uh, a lot of them are in, in accommodation and getting getting uh, grants and all the rest of it. So it doesn't say much there. So I'm just only suggesting that uh, if, they were, if they were helped uh, by way of finance, uh, to perhaps uh, go back to their own countries and help their own countries to develop, that would seem a very prudent thing to do because we we look for our Irish people to come back and help to build up, up this country, and which some of them did. And did a great job. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned there the single gauge. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know who what the single gauge is, of course, it's a train that was that was running in Ireland. Isn't that correct? When you see there, you are. You see a lot of people knows nothing about our history because I'll tell you why they're not hearing about it. Are they hearing about it on the media? No. Is the government doing nothing about it? They're hearing about it not at all. But you will hear about it from the Christian TV Ireland project. And I've heard about it before. I've mentioned this type of thing before, but now we're in uh, this this situation, and we've seen what has occurred. And the great gift of the no has woke this crowd up, and they're on 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 shaky ground. Mm. And uh, so, uh, Mister Harris now is 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 Taoiseach stroke Prime Minister. Um, he's from the same Fine Gael party uh, that has caused such. Problems for Irish people. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I don't think like, he's going to be able to make any any change. Michael Healy Ray, if he had the power, it would make the changes that's required. He wouldn't do. I mean, look, transport has always been an issue in Ireland, but of course, removing all the train tracks around Ireland by Mister Todd Andrews there all those years ago wasn't a very bright idea, you know. And we have a serious issue with rural isolation and mental health, you know, as a result. Um, yeah, we are talking. People were connected. Towns and villages were connected, which at least uh, they inherited that. Why destroy what you had inherited, which was at least positive? It just beggars belief. And was in my time, in the in the sixties, the tram and hope was a great uh, social thing. You'd hear yap yap yap. There was a fella, uh, a kind of a would say the conductor. He was uh, doing something. And then there was somebody else um, manoeuvring the thing and there was wires up above. It was all very good because it was going up hills. Uh, Holt is a hilly place. It's mm-hmm. like a little mountain. And up this I... tram was gone. Mm-hmm. They should have kept that. It was a, it was a very important ingredient uh, because walking up them, the train stops down below. You have to walk up to where you might live. You have a hump in your back before you know where you are. My uncle had a hump in his back. Um, uh, one of my, well, my, no, not me, 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 me grand uncle, if you like. And I thought he got it from walking up, but I think he had a touch of rheumatism, probably. But he was on the sea, so he probably got this and all the rest of it. So, but I thought he was walking up that hill. And it was full of hills, too. It is indeed. I suppose, look, the biggest problem you have in rural Ireland that our privileged politicians in Dublin don't understand or they don't seem to be able to get the grips of it is we have a lot of unemployment in Ireland, which leads to a lot of poverty. OK, um, I spoke to a businessman um, and his son a while back and I said to them, this is down in County Kerry. I said, did the economic crash of 2008, did it affect you? And he says, no, Oliver, he says, it didn't affect us really at all, to be honest with you. It didn't affect most people in Kerry, actually. And I said, really? It's not unusual. Why is that? And he said to me, well, he says, because we've always been living in poverty. Like, and that's a sad reflection of rural Ireland, you know. So our politicians in it's... Dublin don't understand the issues that are going on in rural Ireland. OK, there, there's vast issues there that need to be resolved. Um, for example, our Leo Radker, our Simon Harris, our Roderick O'Gorman, do you really think they'd understand the common agricultural policy from a farmer's perspective? You know, um, right, right. 
handicap one, two, and three. Catherine Fall had had the next teacher, um, Mary Copland from Donegal, a nice person and a good, but a most unlikely character to be Minister for Agriculture. Uh, what agriculture would she know? Uh, I've been a teacher. Uh, so that was the start of lack of respect for the Irish people and farmers. I know I saw there where farmers were objecting that they're not getting payments for something called gloss, uh, which is something to do with the environment. I mean, how would have gone down that road is a mystery to John Malone. Uh, could they not uh, have something up here between their ears and do what they've done for years uh, without any uh, hindrance and that? The worst thing that ever happened was slurry being being made instead of manure, which was. And uh, farmers have a tough job out in all weathers. And uh, they deserve more respect than to be concerned about the environment. Uh, they, they, they are very prudent. If it wasn't for them, we'd be starved. We have a good agricultural country for this crowd that knows nothing about anything and is misruled in my book. Uh, and and uh, isolated villages and towns and the country and uh, family stores now at nearly a thing of the past, except of course for for the ones like Supervalley and Centra and Spar, they're family owned, but they're kind of monopolies too. You won't get your products in there unless you, you sort of have a um, unless you're pretty good and funny enough. I got mine into it after six months, which was a record in the Supervalley. In Cork, but the fellow Galway, he had that, and he didn't take us, and I wasn't too keen on him because I got on very well in the West of Ireland. And this fellow that was down there for Super Value uh, because they had the place there, and uh, I didn't take take too kindly to him because people down there in the West of Ireland want, wanted to stop the stuff, and this fellow was, was he, he was in, interfering with it, you know. <laughs> he, was, he was very niggardly in his, his approach. That's it, that's it. But um, I suppose, look, Michael Healy Ray is not going to be the Taoiseach anytime soon. So maybe they need some kind of power restructuring because it looks like our politicians are only capable of looking after Dublin. <laughs> it seems to be everything is about Dublin. OK. Um, and so maybe Michael Healy Ray and the independents should have a stronger say within government, you know, that. What well, would you think? see, you're, you're going on the business, Oliver, for some strange reason. And did you think that Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael are going to be permanently in government or something? Which I doubt very much. If the independents and those people uh, that are members of Fianna Fáil and Fianna, Fianna Gael and those, as I've said, if they started, I couldn't imagine being happy in any, uh, being in, uh, a member of those uh, organisations, uh, join the independents and form a bigger group than what they are and give some cohesion and have a policy which would be pro-life and pro-Irish and pro bring them back to towns the way they were and making them connected and uh, family business to be encouraged to be opened again. There's so much needed to be done that's of a positive nature to rejuvenate. They've been neglected, and the business of uh, politicians in Dublin, they should know about the country. They shouldn't be just concerned about Dublin, but they've ruled upon the streets, which was a beautiful street for, for years, and they put too much old stuff down it that there was no need to. You mm -hmm. keep your main street, you keep your your capital city, the Lake of O'Connor Street, wide, and the same in other parts of the country. Keep, uh, you know... Uh, uh, that type of thing, so that uh, with the trees and the fountains and all the rest of it, like it's it's nothing like what it was. It was beautiful, and it was uplifting. And look at it now. It's apparently there's a it's crime ridden or something and stuff like that, and and so there's difficulties that we have a lack of police in the streets. So Michael Healy Ray and all these if the if the all these other ones from these parties that are fed up with what they're being at. And a lot of them are rural TD, come together for goodness sake as a, in a block and give people a choice. I think, John, rejuvenated towns and villages. There's so much to be done. So don't be worried about this business of concentrating in Dublin. <laughs> uh, you need people to concentrate in the country. There's more than Dublin in the country, there's, there's, there's 26 counties and uh, 
in some ways there should be 32 counties. Yeah. Uh, so we what have I, Britain sticking us. Yeah. Go ahead. What I'm suggesting, John Malone, is okay, that we've always had parties centered in Dublin, and Dublin gets everything. Okay. I do not think the Fine Gael or any of the other parties will be around for long more. Okay. Um, but I do think that you need more influence of people like Michael Healy Ray, the rural independents. Okay. They need more power is what I'm saying, to do things, to manoeuvre things, okay? Um, because regardless of what party you have in Dublin and Leinster House, it's always going to be about Dublin, okay? And the... I'm forced to say you won't have parties as was. They're, they're on a hiding to nothing, in my view. I don't know how anybody could possibly vote for them. Uh, there's a chance for, for all the independents, people of like mind that are in these parties, to come together and call themselves what they like, um, independent alliance or something of that caliber, to give people a choice and be pro-life and look after the towns and develop the towns and villages that have been isolated and do things that needs to be done. There, there's so much needs to be done uh, that you nearly want to make a list. I've already indicated uh, as regards to too many people from abroad uh, in the country that uh, disturbing the whole equilibrium and causing problems. Uh, suffice to say that, sh that they should be encouraged, those that would like to go there, and give them some financial aid to return and develop their own countries. So there's a lot of things to be done uh, that will free up all this money that's cost them for to do what they're doing with all the people that they've allowed in. And we have homeless Irish people, and we have we have all sorts of problems, social problems. So um, you, you've got to start somewhere and you've got to have a plan. And the plan has to be, quite frankly, uh, independence and people of that persuasion in the same parties at the moment. And they must be fed up to their teeth and need the rural TDs because they're not being able to express themselves, are they? Well, that's what I'm saying. They, they need more power. You know, and you need to... Well, aside from the power, forget about thinking power. If they come together the way we're talking about and do things that needs to be done urgently for the good of the Irish people. That's what you want. And forget about the parties, the, the like of what's, what's been ruling for so long and haven't done such a good job. Things come about just um, the way they did with the fact that we're in the EU. And uh, fairly supportive of it. And now I think we'd be paying more into it because Britain left. Uh, but we don't hear much about that. There's a lot of stuff we don't hear about. We'd be paying more into it, uh, up to four billion or maybe whatever it is. But we don't hear it about. But we need to hear all these things. Uh, but aside from that end of it, the business of the independence and people and the parties that are dissatisfied with the way they've been. The rural TDs especially, because they're not all Dublin TDs. There's people from the country and um, good good Irish people that are in these parties and they must be fed up to their book teeth. So that's what you want. And uh, with, with, an, with an agenda that's, that's pro-life and pro the Irish people and to sort of bring back those towns to put a bit of life in them and encourage family stores and limit the power of the, the multiples uh, that are here, uh, by rights they should have only 10% of the market. We've said it before, and I'm repeating that again. There's, there's, you, you've got to do these things. Uh, you've got to take, um, what would I call it, if there's, a, if there's a major problem, you've got to take an extra one and try to straighten it out. But you won't do it with the parties that have been in power for so long. Um, you won't do it with them. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, Oliver.